Praise God. Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners. I plead your blood on this lesson in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, last night on Google Meets, we went pretty thoroughly through the armor. Through the armor, uh, you will find the armor that you need to put on in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 18. Okay, um, come to Google Meets. Try to come to Google Meets. We have it again <clears throat> tomorrow night, which is Thursday. We have it Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Starts at 8 p.m. Well, the doors open at 8 p.m. The room does, and we start lesson at 8.30. And uh, we're going to be going over Fruits of the Spirit Thursday night. But I want to go over this real quick, and you can keep your own notes. I had the class draw it out on a notebook. You know, um, just draw enough, like two lines down and then a bunch of lines across, okay? Put it at the top, line number one. Row one is the devil's plan for your life. Row number two is God's plan for your life. And then the Bible verses for those plans. Just, just stop right here. Don't pay attention to that yet. From here on back, one, two, three. Rows one, two, and three we're going to focus on here. Okay, I hope you can see that. I'll call it out to you. So you draw it out like that. And number one, okay. So we're talking about when Paul was talking to the Ephesians. Paul warned the believers in Ephesus that they were in a spiritual battle against an unseen forces of darkness. So are you. You are in battle against unseen for forces, unseen forces of darkness. You can't see them with your eyes, but they see you and they cause you problems daily. They try to. Okay. So they were struggling against evil powers and they were scheming to destroy them. All right. They had to stand firm against the devil, just like you have to stand firm against the devil daily and the powers that attack Christians because that's what they want. They come to wear out the saints of the most high. You wear you out <clears throat> with fear, anxiety, attacks, whatever, whatever they could do to keep you out of God's word every day. They come up with stuff like that. Okay. So they come to, uh, so Christians, you have to stand firm against the devil and the powers, okay, that attack Christians, your families, your churches, the body, the group, whatever. He's going to attack you everywhere you are, the enemy, the devil. He's very clever, y'all. He's very wise, very smart, and he tries to attack you in many, many different ways, okay, sometimes directly and sometimes in ways that are more subtle. You can read about it in 2 Corinthians 11, verses 14 and 15. So let's just go through some of these ways I want you to be aware. The devil's plan is for you to put yourself first daily. He wants to make sure you put you first. So right there, put the devil's plan is for me first. Put me first. How about you? He wants you to put yourself first. But God's plan is to put God first. That's why you wake up in the morning. I know you've got a busy day, but the first thing you do is spend a little bit of time with God. Put God first. Bible scripture for that. Put it right across here is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Just going to fly through some of these. The next one, the devil's plan is to lie. He lies. God's plan is truth. Proverbs 14, 25. The devil's plan is for you to have fear. God's plan is love. 1 John 4, 18. The devil's plan is to get you discouraged. God's plan is confidence and strength. Deuteronomy 31.8. The devil's plan is anger. God's plan is patience. 2 Timothy 2.24. The devil's plan condemns other people. Condemns. God's plan is for you to endure. Colossians 3. Verses 12 and 13. The devil's plan is for you to get your power from alcohol and drugs, from substance. God's plan is for you to be powered by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 The devil's plan is for you to be complaining all the time. God's plan is contentment. Philippians uh, 2.14 The devil's plan is for you to do things your way. God's plan is for you to do things God's way. Proverbs 16, 25. You want to know what the devil's plan is for you? Death. 
What did I tell you all death really is? Not when you uh, leave off this planet, out of this body. That's not death. Death is when you leave this planet out of this body and you don't go to God because of your sins. When you are separated from God for eternity, that is death. Not because we come out of this skin. That's not death, y'all. Death is eternal separation from God. God's plan is for you to have life. Eternal life. John 5, 24. The devil's plan is for you to gossip. God's plan is confidentiality. Proverbs 20, 19. The devil's plan is for you to have regret and shame. God's plan is God's forgiveness. Acts 3, 19. The devil's plan is greed. God is giving. The devil's plan for you is to be greedy. God's plan is for you to give. That is, uh, I can't see what I wrote there. Luke chapter 12, verses 15, 21. There's so many more chapters on that. I'm just going to give you one, though, for these. Now, I'm going to go on to the right side. I, I couldn't even fit it all on the board last night. The devil's plan is for you to have cursing in your life. God's plan is for you to have blessing. Luke 6, 28. The devil's plan is for you to have revenge. God's plan is for you to have forgiveness. Matthew 6, verses 14 and 15. The devil's plan is for you to have hateful talk. God's plan is encouragement. Ephesians 4, 29. The devil's plan is for you to have self-pity. God's plan is for you to sing songs of praise even when you don't feel like it. Ephesians, I mean, uh, I'm getting lost here. Self-pity. So I was praying. Ephesians 5, 19 through 20. The devil's plan is for you to have laziness. God's plan is productivity and watchfulness. Proverbs 12, 24. The devil's plan is for you to have unfaithfulness. God's plan is loyalty. Philippians 2, 4. The devil's plan, irresponsibility. God's plan is dependability. Proverbs 14, 14. The devil's plan is for you to be rude. God's plan is for you to be considerate. Titus 3, 2. The devil's plan is for you to worry. God's plan is for you to rest. Matthew 11, 28 through 29. Satan's plan is for you to have anxiety. God's plan is for you to have peace. John 16, 33. The devil's plan is for you to be jealous and envious. God's plan is for you to have an abundant heart. James 3, 16, 17. God's, I mean, the devil's plan is for you to use others. God's plan is sacrifice for others. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. God, Satan's plan is for you to have rage. God's plan is for you to have self-control. Colossians 3, 8 through 12. The devil's plan is for you to have, be sexual, sexually immoral. God's plan is sexual fidelity. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3. And the devil's plan is for you to do everything you do by your own power. God's plan is for you to do everything you do by God's power. Ephesians 3, 16. Okay, praise God. So the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy your life. God is the only one that offers you a, a, a life abundantly and more abundantly. Okay, we went over. I don't have time to do this on video. But we went over extensiveness about the sword of the about the uh, the weapons, the armor, the armor. Okay, you have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the sword of the spirit. Your feet are prepared with the gospel of peace, and you got the shield of faith. Okay, so it says in Ephesians six ten through eighteen, ten through twelve says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Why do you have to armor up? Because you are a soldier in a battle that you can't see yet. You can't see this battle with your eyes, but you're in it. You're in it. You can see the plans the devil has laid out in front of you in row one. You got row one. This is all the devil's plan right here. You have skip two. You have row one here, the devil's plan to destroy you. Kill, steal, and destroy your life. That's the devil's plan. Okay, so you, you are in a battle, and you have to armor up. Okay, 
For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. There is evil forces in the heavenly realms that is here to attack nobody but you right now, okay? Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground after you have done everything to stand. Are you doing everything you can to stand? Are you doing everything you can to stand up and fight this battle and win it? Because with God's plan is for you to have life, have it more abundantly. Okay. Verses 14, 15, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the, the uh, flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let me tell you, what well, we just named off everything here. The helmet, the shield, the, the breastplate, the belt, the shoes. Everything is, is, is protection for you. That's your protection. Okay, the helmet of salvation. The shield of faith, hear me, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the feet prepared uh, with the, the peace of the gospel. All that is your protection. You have one weapon out of all this, and that is the word of God, the sword. That is your weapon to fight with. What did, what did Jesus do when Satan came and, and, and uh, attempted Jesus? All three times. Jesus stuck the sword out in him, the word of God. That is your weapon. So I had somebody ask me, do I really need to read the Bible? Well, do you want to win this battle? Do you want an, a, a life and more abundantly? Then yes, you need, to, you need to know God's word. You need to read it, study it, know it, and live by it. That is your only weapon. Okay, so... And he said, and pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So we pray for always. We always pray. We're always talking and in commune with God the Father. We are always in commune with him. And we are always praying for the other saints because saints, all of the saints are getting attacked daily, you guys. So we need to lift each other up in prayer. So when you're praying at home just for yourself and your life and your family, you need to also be praying for the rest of the saints, even the ones you don't know, because every single saint of God is being attacked by the devil with more than this, but this is just some of the list, okay? And it's a struggle for even people you don't know, saints you don't know. So include everybody in your prayers. Include the body of Christ in your prayers, okay? Because it's a real battle, all right? Uh, we went through this quite much. Uh, we spent a couple hours on it last night in Google Meets. And like I said, we're going to go in through the fruits of the Spirit and have a deeper discussion on that uh, tomorrow night, which is Thursday night, okay? So let's talk about who wrote the book of Ephesians. Who, 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 was, a, who was bringing this up to the, to the uh, Ephesians? It was Paul. Paul, who was Paul? Paul was an apostle of Jesus Christ. As a young man, he used to, he used to persecute the followers of Jesus, having them arrested and put in jail. Paul did that. And then one day on his way to Damascus, a bright light appeared and blinded him, literally, and Jesus spoke to him from heaven and told him to take this message to the Gentiles and the Jews. And Paul was converted and baptized right then. And he went on many missionary journeys, y'all, and wrote letters to believers and churches in different cities and stuff. Okay? So, just wanted you to be aware of who, who, who was writing to these churches, to this particular church. But this is what Paul said we need to do. We need to put on the belt of truth says, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Okay, I'm just going to do short form. Back in the, roll, in the soldiers' days, in the Roman soldiers' days, they had a belt that wrapped around their waist with little uh, silver, I don't know, uh, little silver balls on it or something that, you know, it came down. 
in front of them to cover their, it is the belt, and it came down in front of them to cover their private areas, okay, for protection, okay? The breastplate was, you know, made out of whatever they made it out of, um, lamb skin or something, and anyway, it was an armor, you know, so they would protect their vital organs in their chest, okay? And they had the uh, feet prepared with the gospel of peace, Okay, because the soldiers back then had to do a lot of marching, marching. They had to make sure their feet didn't slip and slide and they could stand firm in their place. And it kept them firm. Okay, the shield of faith. Okay, the shield will protect you from fiery darts and things coming at you. Okay, the helmet of salvation. A helmet. The Roman soldier helmet was uh, made of bronze and iron and and. Uh, they had little pieces that come down about the back of their neck and around the sides of their cheekbones to cover, you know, kind of protect their face and cheeks, you know, and, and they had little cushions they wear like uh, sponges and stuff inside the helmet so it would fit more comfortably on the head, okay? So it did a lot of protecting their head, okay? Protect their skull and, and their neck from the enemy's weapons. So they had to armor up. They had the sword of the spirit which is their weapon. Now, that was all their protection I just named. Now they have something they kill with. They got a weapon now. This is what you better not let it stick in you. You're going to die. This is what they fight with. And Paul calls the, the uh, sword, I mean the sword, the word of God. Same sword Jesus Christ used to fight off Satan. Is the same sword you have available to you if you pick it up and read it and live by it. That's the key. You can read it all day long, but if you don't live according to it, well, you have not picked up your sword, okay? Nor are you getting baptized in the water. You have to be baptized in the water, okay? Which is living according to God's word. All right, you're going to be going into battle. The Roman military worked together using a formation known as the tortoise, okay? And the tortoise, the rows, the rows of soldiers closed all the gaps between one another and held their shields at the edges, okay? So there was, there was all just a line of soldier, 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 and all the shields, nothing could get through them. They lift their shields up. So the first row of men placed their shields in front of them to protect the front mans in the front, okay? And... And, and soldiers on, on the flanks held their shields to the side. The troops in the middle balanced their shields on top of their helmets and overlapped them. Let me show you a, a picture right there. You see the picture? Just like that. So they were protected, guarded all the way around. Okay, the, the, the formation protected the soldiers like, like a shell uh, protects a tortoise, okay? If I'm saying that right, you know, a tortoise. <laughs> so as long as the uh, soldiers remained together in this formation, they were nearly undefeatable. So it's important to notice that the shield described by Paul was intended to be used in company with others. The rectangular Roman shield was built for use in the tortoise uh, formation. Okay, in the same way, our faith is intended to function with other Christians, drawing us together and strengthening us to care for one another. Like Roman soldiers in the tortoise formation, when Christians remain close to each other, we can be strong. Galatians 6, 2 says, carry each other's burdens. And in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes 4, 12 says, Though one person may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. The Bible is telling you to form your power. There's power in numbers, power in the body. The more you have praying for a certain situ situation, the powerful it is. The more, per, the more you're praying together, coming together as the body, looking out for one another, looking out for the ministry, look, praying for the ministry, doing what you can do in the body, it brings power, protection. You understand? So it's very important. But again, the devil wants you to be very selfish. He wants you to be selfish. It's your way. It's me first. La, 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 la. Well, that's not God's way. Okay. 
So just right, read through that and, and get your armor on because there is a real battle, y'all, going on around you daily. And I speak to many of you daily that is fighting this battle. And most of you, it's all the same battle. It's all the same battle with the same answer. The same answer for every single one of you. Get in God's word and live according to it. That's your answer. All right. If you don't know Jesus, ask him to save you. All right. A couple of you, thank you for what you've done for helping this ministry. Thank you for, for doing that. All right. In Jesus name, God bless you all. Come to Google meets tomorrow night, which is Thursday night. The room will open at eight. We start at eight 30. Say what you got to say. And at eight 30 sharp, we start. Okay. The code is R A O dash U B O F dash M V I. Put it in and just come in. If you have a cell phone, you got to download the app. If you have a laptop or you know desktop, just search it and come on in the room. All right, in Jesus' name, God bless each one of you.